Welcome to Minimalish. I'm your host, Desiree, and I want to encourage you to walk towards a simplified life and make room for what matters to you. Minimalism is the movement that's all about having less stuff so that you have more time for the things that you care about. It's become a pretty big thing, and it's changed my life. But sometimes it feels like minimalism has become about subscribing to a trendy movement and trying to do it perfectly. My goal is to help you find a sustainable, realistic version of minimalism that actually makes sense for your life. Minimalish is about grace-filled minimalism. It certainly is not about doing it perfectly. And each week, We'll talk about the topics of simple living, motherhood, decluttering, slowing down, mindset shifts, and everything else in between that will help us move towards a more intentional life. And I'll often invite a guest on to chat with me about these topics as well. I'm so glad you're here, friend. Let's dive in. Hey friend, so today we are continuing our August focus on school and work. Today we're gonna be focusing in on school and we're gonna be talking about something that I think is on so many of our minds and that is back to school season. Whether you've already sent kids back to school or you don't even have kids that are you're sending back to school, this episode I think is going to resonate with you. I have my friend Jen on the podcast. She's actually a listener of Minimalish and she reached out to me a while ago and just told me a little bit about her story. She's a teacher and a mom of three. All three are school age children and today we're really going to be diving in to some routines that can help you in the back to school season. She's gonna talk about some of the routines that keep her sane, like how she does lunches and dinners during busy seasons like this one for her. And we're also gonna be talking about clutter, school clutter specifically, things like paper clutter and drop zones or mudrooms, whatever you wanna call them. And I'm just so excited to dig into this one with you. So many of you have told me you want to hear more about decluttering on the podcast. So this episode does have a focus on how we can keep certain spaces in our home more peaceful when they are apt to get a little bit overwhelming, like in back to school season. So whether you are sending someone back to school right now, or maybe you're a teacher going back to school, or maybe you're starting up homeschooling again with your kids, either way, like even if you're not, you're gonna be able to find something in this episode that you can take away and go for because we all could use a little more simple in our days. And when it comes to these things like paper clutter and drop zones, I feel like they're just easily able to get overly cluttered, overly full of stuff that we don't need. And I just love Jen's simple way of keeping these things a little less chaotic. Before we jump in, I just wanna share two quick resources that I have for you that can really help in busier seasons like back to school season. The first one is my cleaning routine resource. If you haven't downloaded that yet, check it out, especially if you can relate to me in the fact that I don't really love cleaning, it's not my strong point in life. So if that's you, I kind of created this routine for myself in March of this year. It's been really working out for me through busier seasons and through calmer seasons. And I just wanted to share this with you again that you can download this for free. You'll get an audio file. You'll get a three-day cleaning mindset course because really for me, that's what I needed was a mindset shift on cleaning. And you'll get a printable resource that tells you all about how to use the cleaning routine. And it gives you a printable list that you can use along with routine as well. The other thing I wanted to tell you about real quickly is just that I have a rhythms and routines mini course. It's called Simple and Purposeful Days. So if you are in a place right now where you're wanting to create and implement and actually stick with new routines in your life, this course is for you. It is made to help you create routines that make sense for you. It's not giving you a bunch of pre-made routines and telling you to try to implement them in your life. It's about you making them and then following through with them. It helps you get to the purpose of your routines that you're creating. It helps you get to the actual point where you're following through and making this a habit in your life. So if you think either of these resources would be helpful to you in your current season, check them out at DesireeEndries.com slash store. That's where you can get any of my free resources and my courses as well. I also wanted to talk to you about something super exciting. Minimalish has just reached 200,000 downloads. 
I cannot even believe that that's the truth right now. Just keep your eyes peeled on Instagram because I am going to be doing a giveaway to celebrate this. And I am just so, so thankful for you. I'm so thankful that you show up here each week and you listen in and enjoy the show. I'm so thankful that you share it with your friends, that you share it on social media, that you help get the word out about the show. I'm just incredibly, incredibly thankful and humbled by this number. I just want you to know that my vision for Minimalish is that it's a community of women cheering each other on towards a beautiful, simple life where we choose joy and choose gratitude and choose to be content with the beauty that's all around us. We choose to open our eyes and see that every single day instead of being distracted and clouded by the things that don't matter. So I'm just really thankful that you're a part of that because this message just means so much to my heart and And I have seen and heard from so many of you that it's been a game changer to you and your family. So I'm just so thankful that we can do this together, that this show is about community and that we're walking towards really good things together and that you're a part of it. So with all that said, friend, if you valued this episode, if you found something useful in it, if you enjoyed listening to it, share the show with a friend, share it on Instagram. And if you're loving it, go ahead and give it a rating or review if you haven't already. I'm just thankful for you. I'm thankful for you 200,000 times, 100 million times. (laughs) I cannot tell you how thankful I am for your support of the show. It's truly an honor to have you here listening, and it's truly an honor to chat with you here each week. All right, let's now dive into my conversation on all the back-to-school systems with Jen. Well, hi, Jen. Thank you so much for hopping on the podcast with me today to talk about back-to-school in general. And before we get started, I would love it if you tell our listeners a little bit about who you are, what you do, your family, you know, your story in general. Okay, so I am a teacher. I have been a teacher for 13 years now. I teach first grade, um, and I also have three children of my own at home. And so um, they actually don't attend my school where I teach. So we have a lot of different papers coming in all the time um, from different schools. So my oldest son is actually going into seventh grade. And then my middle son is going into second grade. So he's in a completely different building. And then my daughter is in preschool. So she is in a completely different building. She's four. So um, we have papers coming basically from their three schools and my school. So a lot of paper clutter coming in. Um, And we started our minimalism journey probably like four years ago, I would say four to five years ago. And it's really helped with the paper clutter, not only at home, but in my classroom, I use a lot less paper as well. So that's awesome. And um, I didn't even realize that you had like all three of your kids were in school and, you know, different buildings. So yes, um, I'm just really excited to hear your perspective, because I know that that has to be a little bit overwhelming, you know, if there's no, if, if you don't have a system around it, like I'm sure that you have to, or else you can just get to this huge pile. (laughs) Absolutely. So, um, when my oldest was in school, it was a lot easier to manage when it was just him. Um, and then as my second one entered school, we were like, okay, we have to have some systems in place here because, We would forget dates or deadlines when things were due, like special nights at the school, family events, and it just got to be really overwhelming. And then when my third entered, it was a whole new ball game. So we really had to put some good systems into place. Yeah. And I have worked with, um, you know, moms of all different, like, you know, phases and seasons of motherhood just through decluttering. And I have seen that paper clutter has been kind of a huge issue for a lot of people to think through, especially when there's multiple kids involved. So that makes Mm -hmm. a lot of sense. And I'm so glad to have your perspective because I just, I don't have that experience yet um, with just the toddler. So 
Yeah. So talk to me um, in general, because it's back to school season right now, um, as this season approaches and for you, when did you say like, are you, do you have students coming back next week? Yes, next Wednesday um, we start with students, but I've been back at work for probably a couple weeks here and there, just getting the classroom ready and decluttering and doing all those fun things. So Yeah, and do your kids go back around the same time? Actually, um, we filled out a wait. Our district where I teach filled out a waiver to start um, early. My kids will actually go back after the holidays, so this is the first year where I'm starting two weeks prior to them, which is actually kind of nice because I can enjoy their first day because I'll be settled in with my own schedule for a couple weeks by the time that they start back. Yeah, that's nice. Well, that's good. Um, That takes, I'm sure, a little bit of the overwhelm out of it. Um, And I would love to know, kind of like with all of that in mind, what systems do you put into place once this season comes around? to keep the school clutter in general at bay within your home? Um, So the first thing that I do is I have a binder at home. It's just really basic. And um, my kids each have a folder, just like a poly two pocket folder. Um, And I turn them inside out so that I can use the rings inside of the binder. And so I label the outside of the folder with um, each child's name and what year it is. And then I put in the front pocket, um, I put items that I wanna keep. So like crafts that I really wanna keep. And um, in the back pocket, I put information that we need to hold on to for the year, whether it's passwords, um, for websites, um, yearbook money that's gonna be due, or anything that I need to hold on to. And I just keep that binder throughout the year and my husband and I both utilize it. We sort through it and sort through their folders and put it in the correct um, pocket in the folder all throughout the year. And then um, we basically at the end of the year can pull that folder out of the portfolio and close it up and it has the year on it, how old they were. We get rid of the informational papers and we have all their crafts in one little folder and we just put it in their trunk. Um, As far as papers coming in, when we were remodeling our home, um, we really thought about where we wanted things to be that would be the most efficient. Um, And I just did not even want paper to enter into the house if it was not something I needed. Um, So I ended up using a wall in the garage and I put up a couple of large shelves and some hooks for backpacks. um, And there's a little garbage out there. (laughs) And so as my kids come, they dump their shoes in the basket they hang up their backpack and grab their lunch out and they grab their folder out. They take out anything that's not something that we need in the house as far as papers go. So they know if it's like a note that I really need from their teacher or if it is um, just like a family night at this restaurant, they know they can just recycle those ones Um, because we get basically everything digitally now. So we're getting digital information from the school, but we are also getting paper copies from the school. Mm -hmm. So um, they will put it right in recycle. Um, They'll bring in the things that I will need or the crafts that they made. And sometimes those go in the garbage too (laughs) after (laughs) bedtime. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't keep it all, but um, I will put them right in the folder right away um, or you know, after dinner. So everything is dealt with each day and most of it doesn't come in the house. (laughs) So shoes are out in the garage, their backpacks hang on a hook in the garage. Um, The only thing that comes in are the things that we absolutely have to have. So, and I really wanted to put that in place because once it's in the house, it's another thing to deal with, but if it never enters, it's dealt with right away. So yeah, that's that sounds like such a good system. Um, and I always love hearing like different ways people do their drop zones and you know yeah. entryways or whatever you want to call it because I we personally like keep ours kind of out of sight of the main area too. Um, and 
I even, you know, we don't come in through our garage, but we have a garage too. And I'm thinking like, Oh, that could be, we don't, maybe we don't utilize that enough. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and you gave a really good, like, you know, I, we can't see what you're talking about because it's a podcast, but I feel like you explained it so well. So definitely the teacher and you, <laughs> yeah. thank you for explaining that visual so well. Yeah. Um, so I also would love um, to hear just like, what are your best tips around paper clutter? Like if we can just hone in on that for a second, because sure. I know that this is a big struggle in general, um, you know, and especially during this season of back to school. Yeah. So what are your biggest tips? Like, how do you get over the mindset of like, like you said, like some of those crafts like have to go in the trash? Like how, how do you do that? Because I know if I, my, uh, my, my parents live nearby and my mom was just like, they redid their kitchen and she was going through and she found like my notebooks from fifth grade and like all, you know, stuff that like, she, she kept everything and it ended up as clutter and, yeah. you know, just your be- best tips on paper clutter in general. So, um, I had a really hard time initially when we started on our journey into minimalism. Like, I could not get over letting papers go. <laughs> like, I, whether it was crafts because it was my first child and I wanted them all. Um, and as I kind of progressed in my journey, I realized that the things that are important are not typically on paper. (laughs) Mm. Um, And so I started to let go a little bit more. And honestly, right now, as far as paper goes, we, I don't hold on to really a lot at all. I got online and looked up the guidelines for like bills you should keep or um, how long should you keep your pay stubs and things like that. And I'm actually in the process right now of even transferring that over to digital and just snapping pictures of them. Um, The more I thought about it, even like with pay stubs, they say, you know, hold them for a year. Well, my employer has them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'd never have access to them if it came to that point and I really needed them. They're there. Um, So I really started to let go more of things that I felt I had to have. Um, As far as like sentimental things and crafts, um, my plan is I have them all sorted into the folders by by year, how old they were. Not my oldest doesn't have all all of his because I didn't start it until later. But um, my plan is at graduation, I want to scan them in and you can make a book of pictures out of their crafts. And then that's something that they would have Um, just a book and it would have all the pictures of their crafts or things that they created and how old they were to possibly share with their child. When my um, mom moved down closer to me, I helped her clean out her basement and clean out her house. And it was the same thing you were talking about. Found a box and it was all of my old things. And she's like, oh, this is so great. And I'm like, I don't want it. (laughs) So um, it kind of made me realize like, my kids probably aren't going to want things. I mean, it was neat to look through it for a second, but she had held on to boxes and boxes of things, and I just didn't want it. I mean, I held on to a couple of the things out of them to share with my kids, but I didn't need all that paper. So I've really changed my mindset on paper and what I actually think I need versus what I actually need. So, um, when we check the mail or when we bring papers home, they instantly go into the recycle. If it is not something that I have to pay for, like a bill, a doctor's bill, that goes right up. We have a command center in our house. It's just a small wall and that goes right up and it gets paid right away. And then I either file it until it's been posted or I just get rid of it right after that. So, um, We don't have a lot of paper clutter because we don't allow it in our home. Yeah, that's, we had to get that system going too with our mail. Like I just had to start being like, okay, it takes like 10 steps to get from our mailbox to like (laughs) to the trash can. And if I don't do it now, it's going to be a bigger pile and I'm going to dread going through it. 
And yes. that's what we used to do is just like let it pile up and, you know, keep little coupons that we knew we weren't going to use, but we thought like, oh, what if? And <laughs> yes. it's just like so much more freeing to take that stuff right to the trash. It sure is. And, you know, digital is kind of how things are done now. And so, like I said, when we get stuff from the school, um, we're getting it on paper, but it's also digital. So I can usually find it in any of the newsletters or emails. I don't have to hang on to the physical copy. So, Yeah. And I think most schools are that way. I know the school I used to teach in was that way. So, you know, in, in many schools, you can make sure that you're signed up like for the newsletter or whatever, you know, whatever they send out each week. And then you don't have to hold on to that stuff. That's such a good tip. Yeah. And even in like our my iPhone or I, I don't know if the Androids are the same way, but like when I get an email from the school and it has a date in it, it's underlined in blue and I can click it and it will go right to my calendar. So if it's something that I need and I'm like, oh, I don't want to forget that, I will click on it right then, get it into my calendar and then it's there and I don't have to worry about it. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good tip too. I actually like I know that I see that on my iPhone, but I don't ever yeah. think I've used that other than like if it's an actual appointment. So that's such a good yeah. point. Hi friend, I'm interrupting real quick because I want to tell you about today's sponsor, PrepDish. PrepDish is a meal planning service that will send you an email with a meal plan, grocery list, and prep ahead instructions every single week. They also have gluten-free paleo and keto options, which makes it so much easier to choose healthier meals when you don't really have to do anything to choose them. It's already all planned out for you. You just have to cook the meal. There's no guesswork when it comes to actually cooking these meals each day. And the prep instructions help you save time in the kitchen and get dinner on the table fast. I know that's been helpful for me because my toddler is sometimes kind of angry by dinner time. She's hangry. So I want to make sure that dinner is on the table as fast as possible. Prep dish helps me do that. And the best part is the meals also taste really good too. So what I'm excited about is that Allison, the founder, is giving listeners of Minimalish a two-week free trial. This is the perfect time to try it out, especially if you are sending kids back to school and busier seasons are coming for you. Head to PrepDish.com slash Minimalish to try it out for two weeks. That's PrepDish.com slash Minimalish to try it out for two weeks for free. I'm so excited that you get to try out PrepDish for free, friend. Okay, let's get back to the show. Um, Okay, so I would also love to talk about just like routines. Um, I know like one thing that kind of popped up in my mind is lunches because you said like, you know, your kids take their lunch boxes out of their bags. Yeah. Um, so we could talk about that or what, anything that you think is like essential um, for your days as you go back to school as a teacher and then you're working full time and then your yeah. kids are going back to school and you've got to get like, you know, everyone has to get out the door in the mornings. Um, yes. So what routines do you put in this to place either for mornings, for lunches, whatever that, you know, whatever you think is most has helped you most as a family? So um, it's a really big shift when you're a teacher and you're kind of a stay at home mom or dad um, for, you know, two, three months and mm-hmm. you get in sort of a routine when you're when you're doing those kinds of things and it's just not practical during the school year because there is not time. Um, So one of the main things that we do as a family, when I come home, we um, put all the ice packs back in the freezer and we prep lunches together. So my oldest son might make the sandwiches. My middle son might grab the snacks and we just prep all of our lunches together, including mine and get them in the refrigerator for the next morning. It takes us about five minutes and it helps our morning go really smoothly. Um, And then the other big, big issue when school starts back up is um, dinner. (laughs) It's always an issue, dinner. And so um, we're getting home at different times because Uh, I have a middle schooler who's getting out earlier. I have an elementary student who gets out a little earlier than me, and I usually come home about an hour later. And so uh, my husband loves to cook, but he's just not the best at it. So um, he's always willing, but it's kind of my area. It's the thing I kind of do in the house. So I have really taken to prepping sort of sheet pan meals or things that can be popped into the oven the night before. So I start usually on Sunday and I'll prep 
Monday's dinner. Um, it's not cooked. I don't like, I have a thing about having like pre-cooked foods. Mm. So it's not cooked. So I prep it. It's on the sheet pan. It's ready to go into the oven or it's in the casserole dish or whatever the case may be. And it's ready to go into the oven. And I will just text my husband um, before I'm getting ready to leave and say, put that in. Now I'm on the way home and um, at this temperature. And he can handle that. So um, he will do that. And then while that's cooking and we're getting ready for dinner, I will prep the next night's dinner. So um, we do lunch prep and I prep the next night's meal during the time when our dinner is cooking and we're kind of getting ready to eat. So it's just a quick routine that it really frees up a lot of time and stress and anxiety over dinner. Or if my kids are in sports and, and we have a kind of a crazy night because we have to eat a soccer at five, he knows he can put that, di- that meal in and feed them before I get home and I can eat when I get home. So everybody is fed. It just, we, family dinners are very, very important to us and to sit down with our kids and hear about their day and spend quality time together and not be hustle and bustle all the time. So that is just something I really wanted to focus on. And that was probably about two years ago that I started really making that a routine and a system in our house. And it just works so well and it relieved so much stress. So that is a must have for us. Yeah, I just like that idea of, you know, prepping just ahead a little bit. You know, I think to like with full time working moms, like thinking about this the other day, because I was a full time teacher as well. And I was thinking about how much the weekends, like truly matter, you know, whenever you're at work full time, and how much we can use them for setting ourselves up for a successful week, but also for just like, we have to use them for rest too. So there's such a balance and it sounds like that really helps you, um, you know, have that balance. Yeah. Yep. So those are just the two main things, dinner, lunches. Um, in the morning we wake up staggered, so it's not too chaotic in the morning. I, um, take my oldest one to school. So we get up and kind of eat our breakfast and spend a little time together in the morning before I drop him off. And then the little ones, um, their dad takes them. So um, it's kind of nice because we kind of divide and conquer on that. It's not one person trying to man everything. So I'm fortunate yeah. in that way. <laughs> yeah, that sounds nice. That's awesome. Um, okay, so what about the fact that like you specifically, like in your situation and anyone who's listening that's a teacher or that even just has like seasons that are different, like busier with work and maybe less busy on and off, um, you know, you have to now completely change seasons. I, I know, I remember how that felt, like how exhausting those first couple of weeks are. Um, not that, you know, every week is <laughs> a little bit exhausting as a teacher, yeah. but um So what do you do like in a busier season, like back to school or just like, you know, being a full-time working mom in general, um, what do you do to slow down in some way, keep your sanity in some way, like kind of mental health, um, working mom self-care in general? Is there anything that you do that helps you? Yes. So when I first started teaching, probably for the first five years, Um, I'm the kind of person who's like, yes, yes, I'll do that. Yep, I'll do that. And um, yes to everything. And I love being a part of everything and being on committees and being in the know. Um, But after about five years, I got to the point where I just said, you know what, I, I can't. I can't do all of the things. So what are my favorite things or the things that I'm really invested in? And those are the things I'm going to say yes to. And I started just saying, no, um, I can't do that. My time needs to be balanced with my family. And I really got to the point where my students are really important to me, but my kids are also really important to me and they need that balance in their lives as well. So just saying no to a lot more, it really freed up my time. And it's, it's an art, you know, it's, it's hard to say no. And especially when someone's saying, well, you're really good at this and we really need you. Um, it's hard to say no, but I've gotten better at it and a little more grace filled about it. But 
that's probably the main thing. Um, I also set boundaries for myself. So I will not allow myself to stay past 5.30. Like 5.30 is when I'm going home. My list will still be there the next day and that's okay. Um, I will tackle the top things that need to be done um, in order for me to have a successful day the next day. But other than that, I when that clock hits 5.30, um, I leave. I really actually try to aim for 5 o'clock, but um, 5.30 is my limit, and I'm out of there. Um, so setting those healthy boundaries for myself. Um, I also have an app where I, like, I communicate with parents, and it got to be to the point where like they were getting out of work, so they were messaging me and times like around 5 or 6 or 7, which was fine. Because I understand, I work too, and I message my kids' teachers at the same time. But um, that was the time I was sitting down for dinner with my family, and, and my attention was being taken away. So I, I initially, in the start of the year, tell parents, I'm going to get with you the next morning at school, <laughs> but um, that's my family time. So I won't be responding um, in the evenings. So setting those kind of boundaries as well. Um, and then last year I started adding in meditation in the morning. So I do a quick meditation in the morning for about 20, 30 minutes to just clear my head. Um, I found that, um, a teacher's brain is like a million tabs open on the computer. So, mm -hmm. yep. um, I, my brain was constantly racing from the time I woke up. I've got to call this parent. I've got to turn these papers in. Um, and so I started just meditating and clearing my head of everything. And I found it really slowed my pace in the morning and slowed me down. And I could be more intentional about what I was spending my time on instead of frantically running around trying to do all of the things. Um, and so as soon as I get to school, I just turn my lights down low, I turn on a little bit of quiet music, and I sit down and I write down the top three or five or whatever is attainable things that I have got to get done that day. And I give myself permission to not get the rest of the things on my list done as long as those are done. Um, and so that really allows me to use my time efficiently as well. Um, the weekends, I won't um, take things home. I don't take things home on the weekend. I try to use my time really efficiently in school, whether that's closing my door and not chatting with everyone. Um, you know, whatever it takes to give me those two days of peace and quiet with my family, that's what we do. We also do not allow our kids to play more than one sport or do more than one thing. Um, we make them choose their favorite. Um, we don't want to be overscheduled. And my oldest actually said the other day, um, Mom, you know what? I love our family because we just enjoy each other. Like we enjoy our time together and hanging out at our house. And, and I like that. I like that we're not always going everywhere. So um, we slow down in all respects and all aspects of our life. So. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much that, um, you know, your oldest was uh, made that observation because I think like as parents, we want to give our kids everything. And at the same time, like, you know, like you do have to set boundaries that are, maybe they don't know that that's what's best for them. Like maybe they want to be involved in more than one sport a season, yes. but you know, we know that that's just like, if that's not going to be good for you as a mom to be running everywhere after a full day of work and like running in 14 different directions, then it's not probably not going to be good for your kids either. So, um, yeah, that's just such a good picture of, of how, how boundaries are helpful. Um, yeah. you know, especially with you, you have three kids, like you can't, yeah. you can't do, you can't it, do all. it all. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I feel like now that he's getting older and maturing, we can have conversations about things like that. And he, and he really gets it, you know, I mean, he even said the other day something about our house being really clean. And I said, well, you know, it's clean when we clean it. And he said, no, like, I mean, 
we always put things away. Like as soon as we get things out and we're done with it, we just put it away. I like that about our house. So, you know, so I think he's starting to have these little things that we thought, you know, he might never pick up. He's starting to pick them up and he likes it. And it makes me proud that all of our hard work is paying off because we're modeling these good habits for him. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. It's just really encouraging to hear that that those habits like will, you know, in some ways they're going to rub off on our kids and, you know, I'm sure that made you just it brought you so much joy. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the ultimate goal is for them to understand that family and people and relationships are first and foremost the most important thing that you can do. And um I think we're, that message is getting through to him. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, thank you so much for our listeners don't know this, but you know, you hopped on here with me last minute because I, I just wanted a different perspective on this, um, you know, on this idea of like back to school and the clutter that comes along with it and the overwhelm that comes along with it. Um, obviously I wanted another perspective because I don't have that full experience. So I'm just really thankful. Um, but I have two quick questions that I ask every guest. Um, the first one is what is something that you're simplifying right now? Um, my classroom. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So my classroom is basically, um, what I've, I'm focused on right now and decluttering and simplifying. So I I told you we started on our journey in minimalism about five years ago, but it never really crept into the classroom until I would say a year or two ago. Um, I got a new teaching partner and she and I just click and we're both really um, minimalists at heart and working hard at decluttering. And so we got to talking about, you know, decluttering our classrooms and simplifying routines and putting out less supplies and less paper waste. And so we've really worked together to simplify and we kind of feed off of each other. And so I'm doing all of the simplifying and decluttering in my classroom right now. So yeah, that's awesome to hear because I know like I wasn't a minimalist when I was a teacher and (laughs) except for maybe at the very tail end and I was an art teacher at that point so that was just like (laughs) how do you even approach that but (laughs) yeah (laughs) I wasn't even trying because I knew it was done but um but yeah that's so nice to hear a different perspective because I feel like you know, I, I still like looking at teachers on Instagram because yeah. I still have a heart for teaching and teachers. And I'm like, there's just so much stuff sometimes. Yes. And I don't know yes. that, you know, that can definitely work for some people, but I would be anxious to hear like how kids do in a classroom oh, with less. It's really been life changing. I, I, I will never go back. They, yeah. I mean, the focus and even like scores went up and um, our community was stronger and it just, it, it's been amazing. I could go on forever about kids and how it's affected their learning. So Yeah, that's amazing. Um, that's awesome. So my last question is what's something that you can't stop talking about right now? Well, I know that this is going to be surprising to you, but school. <laughs> school, yeah. <laughs> school. Everything school right now, um, it's just, it's on my, my brain morning, noon, and night. My husband's probably like, please just stop. <laughs> stop yeah. talking about school. But back to school, it really is like as nerve-wracking for teachers as it is for kids. And 13 years later, the first day is still a first day. And um yeah, it's, it's, it's nerve wracking. And, uh, but aside from school, I'm really excited about, um, Brene Brown's new book, um, Dare to Lead. And so I have started reading that and, um, really excited to implement some leadership strategies in my classroom. That's awesome. I actually have that book. I haven't read it yet. I have it on my Kindle. Um, oh, so, good. so it's like on my list. Yes. Um, and now that it kind of encourages me to get after it actually, cause I, yeah. I forgot it was on there. Sometimes I get Kindle books for like really inexpensive and then I'm like, I'll read that one day. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. so thanks for that. that reminder. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, awesome. Thanks again so much. This was such a great conversation. Is there anywhere where listeners can find you and follow along with you? 
So I have an Instagram page and a website. My website, um, I haven't really updated in a while, to be honest, because I really wanted to slow down the roll this summer and relax. Yeah. Um, but my Instagram is uh, just three Ps. So um, you can find me there and I'll try to get up a picture of my garage organization um, so that if anybody is listening, they can see what I was talking about. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'll link that in the show description and anyone listening in can find you there. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. I feel like there was a gold mine of great ideas for parents of school age children in that conversation with Jen. I am just so thankful that she was able to hop on a call with me last minute so that we could chat about this stuff. So before we go, I wanted to ask you to share your systems with me, but not just with me, with the community. So if you go to Instagram and you use the hashtag minimalish life, just minimalish life, there's no like no dash between minimal and ish like there's in the podcast. It's just hashtag minimalish life and tag me. I can see your posts. I would love if you shared your own paper systems or how you tackle paper clutter or your own systems on your drop zones or just, you know, sharing your minimalish life in general. Using that hashtag on Instagram, I just love that minimalish has become a community of amazing women and amazing moms. And I want us to just continue to have a place to encourage one another. So Instagram is one of those places. Start using that hashtag minimalish life and definitely tag me if you are posting something like related to a podcast episode using that hashtag because then I can be sure that I'll actually see it. But just using that hashtag, like I'm going to be following it. I'm going to be cheering you on. You can follow that hashtag as well. And then another place where you can be encouraged on your journey to simpler living is through the Minimalish Facebook group. So just head to facebook.com slash groups slash Minimalish podcast, and you'll be able to join this amazing community where we do discussions around the podcast episodes. Sometimes I go live in there and, you know, just have a chat with you, answer questions. I just really love that Facebook group. I love the women in there. I love the conversations that we have. And it's another place where you can connect and be encouraged on your own simple living journey, because that's really what this is all about. It's about cheering you on towards a simpler life. All right, friend. Meet me back here next week. We're going to be approaching the topic of work and we still have a few weeks left in this series where we're rotating from work to school, back to work, talking about the work that we do and this back to school season, the schooling choices that we make for our kids. I've been loving it. I hope you have too. Thanks again for being here and I will meet you back here next week.